Good morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. So it's Thursday morning. Um, first thing I've had to do is go and get a bloody puncture fixed in me tyre. But there we go, that's all done. Thank you very much Kirkham Tyres. Um, but yeah, so first job today, we've got to set up the valve clearances on the pre-cross flow. All pretty much done, just got to put the front cover on um, and obviously do the clearances. So I told you in the last video, I've had to do those solid spacers for the rocker shaft. So that's all together now, what a rigmarole that is, getting them absolutely perfect. So what you want is you want them nice and free, but you don't want too much sort of end flow on each of the rockers. So we've done that, we've set it all up. Um, next thing we had to do was shorten the push rods. Um, now the reason for this is, whether any of you know, but the pre-cross flow push rods are actually shorter than the, the cross flow rods. Um, you can't get them, or we can certainly not get them. We've tried, we've been in touch with Burton Power, all the rest of it. Um, so we've had to shorten them ourselves. We've had to machine the ball on the end again, and then we've had to put them through the hardening process, which we've done. Next thing, valve clearances. So what we do, guys, obviously this is a Newman cams. We use um, Newman, Newman camshafts. Um, this is a PH5, so this is a fairly, fairly Larry cam, so we've got to get the clearances right. So what we do, first of all, is we go onto the Newman cams website, very easy to use, and we go to camshafts over here, and we go down to Ford. My computer's a bit slow today. It doesn't like it when it's warm. The fans go in alpha leather in there. Then what we do, guys, is we have a look. We've obviously first here. You've got pages here. What would be in a catalog? Um, See, so you've got Pinto, etc. Right at the top here is the Kent Cross Flow and Non Cross Flow. So this is the one we want. If we go down to this box here, you can see PH5 there. Now we go over to the valve clearances which are over here. You can just see there, it says 16 inlet, 18 exhaust, and that's thou. Then underneath would be the metric. So we go with that. Uh, so 16 inlet, 18 exhaust. So we'll go out there guys and we'll show you how to set these um, clearances up. Right guys, so as you can see, we've got all the rocker shaft um, in place now, all tightened up and all these rockers are nice and free. Um, so, first of all, what we've got to do to get the rod, the push rod lengths right, we've got to make sure, if you look down this plane, we've got to make sure that that rocker there is roughly sort of parallel to the head, um, and that's how you sort of want it. You don't want it sort of up here or down there, because obviously when the cam lifts, it's going to be sort of going down like this. So what you run into is um, it ends up running off the, f the front of the valve otherwise so yeah try and get it as parallel as we can so we've done that um, and we've got this end one here which is an exhaust on the rock so i'm going to show you the process now of how we set up these clearances so what i do is we start with this end and work our way back um, you've got the inlets on the two centers here so you've got exhaust inlet inlet exhaust exhaust inlet inlet exhaust so we start with an exhaust um, which is the clearance is 18th hour on the exhaust. We get our feeler gauge here and we find 18th hour because these are imperial. You see there very faintly 18th hour. So that is the gauge we want to be using. And we want to be setting the clearance underneath the front pad and, and the top of the valve. Okay. So what we do to get that in the right position, first of all, We turn the crankshaft around until you can see that rocker obviously been pushed up by the lobe of the camshaft, which is pushing the valve down. We wait till it comes up to the stop and then I turn the crank about 180 degrees and then that ensures that that's going to be off the lobe and on the, the base circle of the, crank, of the camshaft. Then you can see there we've got clearance because obviously I've slackened all these off. Now these nuts here are very 
tight thread. So there's no locking nut, they're just a very tight thread. So what you do is you wind them out um, just so when it's, when it's off the lobe of the cam, you just want plenty of play there. So then what we do is we put our 18 thou gauge under the, un, under the, the pad of the rocker in between the valve and the pad and then we just do this nut up very gradually until it takes up all the slack and you can sort of feel it getting a bit snug on the feeler gauges just checking obviously as we go you still got a little bit of movement there so a little bit more and that's getting a little bit snug now a little bit more You don't want to go too far because it's quite easy to ram that in there when it feels like 18 but it's probably more like 16. So that feels a nice slide fit in there now. So I would say that that is perfect. So then what we do is go on to the next exhaust which is this one here. So again we turn the crankshaft. So this one is being pushed down by the cam. So it's going down now and then once it comes up to the stop where it stops there that's obviously off the lobe we do 180 on the crank and we can be sure now that that is off the the lobe of the cam you see you've got plenty of clearance there because i'll back this right off so again we'll do this up you can see how tight that is Almost feels like it's cross threading, but it's not. It's just very tight. And that now is a very nice snug foot, fit under there. So that is your 18 thou. I mean, these are all gonna have to be checked, obviously, once these, because we've had to mod these um, push rods, once they've all bedded in and the guy's done a few miles, he's gonna have to take the rocker cover off and redo these clearances anyway, because they're more than likely open up. Right guys, so now it's time to do the inlets. We've done all the exhausts. So the inlets are these two and these two, which are the center ones here. You can see that the inlet ports are slightly raised from the exhaust. Now, while we're on this subject of where the ports are, um, I'm sure many of you will know what cross flow and pre cross flow means. Well, cross flow was where you've got inlet one side, exhaust the other. So the flow crosses over the cylinder head. Um, but pre-cross flow, you've got all the ports on the same side. So you've got the inlet go into the cylinder and then out at the same side. So the theory is with the cross flow, obviously the later model, it goes in and while it's still traveling in the same direction, it goes out. Um, and then you've got, obviously you've got more room on one side and the other for bigger ports, etc. Just in case you didn't know that. But yeah, if you look down the ports here, you can see the bigger inlet valves down there as opposed to the smaller exhaust valves. Inlet valves generally are usually bigger than the exhaust valves. Um, obviously different material for different temperatures and also the with the clearances you nearly always find that the clearances are smaller on the inlet than they are on the exhausts. We'll go to the inlet so we do the same thing here. We're going to turn the crankshaft over until this inlet here is compressed as it is and then when it comes back up and comes off the lobe there we move the crankshaft around about another 180 degrees and then we can ensure that that is off the lobe once again so then what we do guys is the inlets are 16 thou so what we've got to do is find our 16 thou feeler gauge there which we have try it in the gap and we've got a big old gap here so what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this snug nut. We see I've gone a little bit too far there. So we'll back that off and we'll go forward. Not so enthusiastic this time. And you can see when that starts to have a bit of resistance on the feeler gauge. That it's a nice sort of snug fit in there. That is absolutely ideal. And just a little feeler there just to make sure that that rocker is one moving free and two you have got the clearance um, so then what we've got to do is the next one so again 
push down and then back up and 180 degrees and when you get pretty good at these guys you can I can normally do the clearances in about a minute to be honest with you a bit different when you're showing it on the camera so there we go a little touch more Slightly enthusiastic. <coughs> and there we go. That's a nice snug fit there. Bit of clearance, happy with that. So we've just got to do these two more inlets, guys, and then these are complete. So there we go, guys. Clearances are all done, as you can see. Now they're all pretty much set up. You can see how sort of in line those rockers are. Absolutely perfect. Also, down the back of the rocker, you've got to make sure of it's all clearing, it's all clearing the um, spring cap, etc. Everything's sitting nicely. Um, so what we do then, once I've done the clearances, I always just, just turn the crank over a couple of turns just to ensure that everything turns nicely. You can see those, see those springs going down lovely. Obviously we've done our dummy build, so say for instance, this exhaust here is fully compressed. We've done our tests that we've got no spring binding or anything like that. Everything's absolutely perfect. So yeah, really happy with that. Just got to get the front cover on now and that is pretty much done. Right guys, thanks ever so much for watching today's video. Bit unusual, we stopped one out in the middle of doing our usual Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but as you can see, the pre-cross flow is all done now and looking absolutely spiffing. Really, really happy with that. Take care, guys.